uh, first uh, module uh, knowledge so you will see that what i'm trying to say we have to just model the symmetry so if i just show you the parts so the first part will be so this is the bottom bar having the length okay how can i find out the length let's find out its length so the length will be 1505 i minus the clear cover so i have the total length will be 3080 having this clear cover so the clear cover will be 35 so i minus the 35 uh, so the 3010 35 fair from 35 fair so the center line will be 155 so that will be the distance of this length bottom bar so i define this thing here so that will be the concrete so if i just show you the concrete uh, material property so the dimension of the concrete will be 100 as i told you that we have 200 so uh, uh, and we have this clear cover so that will be the half it is 100 and the height will be should be 250 okay so that's how we have to you know we defined our model okay now the steel plates the steel plate should be again having the same uh, you know the width having the same width the width is 100 the height will be varies and now the ring spacing strip that will be interesting for you so this is the ring spacing so the total height of the beam the total depth of the beam is 250 minus 35 from top minus 35 from the bottom so the link uh, spacing uh, the link length will be 180 the width is 100 uh, 200 minus 35 and 35 it will be around 75 but I'm, i took 80 uh, just to reduce the clear cover or maybe the clear cover for this side maybe is uh, 235 is the bottom what is the clear cover from the top uh, i think it's not mentioned that's why i took it around you know around 20 yes i took it 20 so this is the half ring symmetric ring and uh, if i then i by using the same knowledge of the assembly the translation uh, the rotations i try to model it you can see this is the ring the top bars if i just show you from here so this is the top bar this is the bottom bar and this is the half okay so this is b not n4 so let's see b not n4 so in b not so that will be okay b not n4 so b not n4 n4 so this is the thing so i have in that one i have 4 18 four bar at the top bottom four bar at the top and the ring spacing so that's that's why i have two bottom bars so if you see why i have two bottom bars that one bottom bar and this is the another bottom bar so this is a two bottom bar for b not and 4 okay 418 so this is a table so shape you can also find some something here about the fibrous concrete just read this paper uh, he used some steel fiber contents for the compressive stand and they provided uh, the compressive stand the stress and curves so by uh, vf1 uh, 1% 0.5% 0% and you can see uh, the the compressive stand and the tensile stand so i think you will find a lot of helping material from this thing also for your paper and then i use at the middle i use the top bar i use the bottom bar why because this is the four point bending yes so this is the four point you can see 1.2 point 3 point 4 point so this is a four point and i'm going to you know draw the uh, i'm 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 modeling this 
portion. So if you are modeling this portion, so if you are modeling this portion, that will be your steel plate and you have something left here. That will be your load plate and you have some, some location here. So that's, I try my best. So I put my sport conditions here. I put my loading conditions here. I play it uh, the, by putting the load conditions here and here, but that will be not, uh, I play with it. You can also play with it and find out the difference. So that's how we can, you know, we can reduce our analysis time. But the geometry, I hope, uh, if I just ask you quickly, do you have any problem while defining the geometry? Please, if you have any questions, please just raise your hands by defining the quarter geometry. If you have any problem by defining the quarter geometry, please raise your hand. That's great. Mashallah, you do not have any problem with the by defining the geometry. Uh, either it will be a full scale or the quarter. But the problem is in this one, and that's what I want to discuss with you, the sport conditions. So now if I'm cutting my beam from here, let it make it full solid. So if I'm cutting my beam here and you can see the strips dots here, that will be the strips dots. So if I'm cutting my beam here for the quarter, so that side do, should not be bent up, should not be, you know, rotate in a, you know, horizontal way. So that side should be fixed. So what are the sport conditions? So that's I just want to discuss with you. So now the first sport condition will be the point load. So the point load will be 37.5 millimeter again in term of U2 millimeter at the load plates. And then I define the roller spore. So that will be the roller spore, your U2 is zero. Either you can define by this way or you can define by the symmetric way, that's up to you. And then I have two another spores. So the first one is the mid side of this thing. So this is the cutting plane. So if just I just click it here, you will see that I will restrain my that side in U1, U1 is the X, R2, rotation at X along X, and R3. So that side will be having, so for example, this is along the X, so the X should be strained. So there is no displacement along this phase along X. There should be no rotation along this span, okay, along this phase. Similarly, I am also cutting this face and I am also cutting this face from the center, that region, that region, okay? So if I just share you that one, so that region is along Y, okay? So that region along, uh, sorry, along Z. So that will be a long Z if I just rotate my beam here. So that will be a long, a long Z. And a long Z, U3 will be zero. R1 and R2 will be zero. So these are the two new things for you if you are modeling quarter member as compared to the full member. So just keep in mind that if you have the face along Z, that will be using Z1. If you have a face, Along X, you have to use this condition. If you have anything along Y vertically, then you have to discuss that. So that's that's how you have to reduce your... Now, that's the one thing. But what about the load? What about the displacement? As as we discussed in the last session, when we are plotting our you know load deflection curve, so if I just show you where I have to do, so the edge bottom, so that, what is the edge bottom? So that point will be my edge bottom. This is the edge bottom point, and I'm taking edge bottom at U2. At the sport, I'm, I'm certain to find out the RF2. 
So when I when I run this whole analysis, okay, and when I go to the edge bottom, so I have the displacement. So I will just take that displacement. That's it, because I told you last time that if we have four points in four against four point, we have the displacement. We will take the average of that displacement. Displacement should always the average. Why? Here's a simple observation. Just imagine you have this steel plate. And there you have four points. You have four elevators connected to these steel plates. So the steel plates have a solid member, and we know that we assume that this there will be no deformation in these steel plates. So the steel plate will be coming down. So if you have four points, four elevators at the four points, four corners of the steel plate, you have the same value, and you will take the average of that four values. Some students thought, okay, now we have to. Add up these four values. No, this is wrong. In the displacement, you will always take the average of the four or two or three values. If you have single point, that's enough. But for the load, load will be the summation. So if you have four points here, and you will take the four sum of the four points, and in our case that will be the quarter. So if we find out the whole beam, so we will be multiply the load carrying. Capacity, the reaction with the four, so that will be the multiplication of the four. First, the addition of the four support points, and then we have to multiply it with the four. Let me show you my Excel sheet for that model. Okay. So, like shape, I also run different viscosity parameter uh, in 2017.007.001 and the time scales and like this. So, these are the loads which which I got it from the abacus. And in in opposite, I multiply this load. You can see here, I multiply this load by four and divide by the thousand to uh, get it in the kilonewton. Okay. So that's the reason I have to because I'm modeling the quarter, so I'm giving the quarter reaction. So if someone asks me, I I'm interested to find out the whole. Load so just just so you have to just multiply the quarter reaction with the four. If you are modeling the half, then you have to just multiply with the half. If you if you are modeling the full scale, you do not need to multiply with anything else. So this is the main concept of the quarter geometry. How you can work smart and model your beam in a quarter member so that you have the less analysis time. Because if I ask shape, because I know shape is is run maybe around 20 or 25 samples. If I ask for that he, for his T joint, maybe he will need uh, he he needs uh, shape. Uh, can you tell me the least minimum time uh, which you uh, with the uh, against you uh, again you get the full analysis for your model shape? The least minimum time. Uh, sir, one hour and thirty around 45 minutes. So that's mean you have a good system. So that means around two or two hours you get a good response, good analysis time. Yes, sir. But if you have, uh, if you are using a low specific computer uh, like i3 or maybe four generation, the old one, maybe the time will be more. And uh, so this is the reason. So but by by using the shape this quarter phenomena, uh, you will get your analysis by maybe by 30 minutes because you are using very high mesh around 50 50 millimeter shape or 75 millimeter mesh. Uh, 50 sir, 50. 50 millimeter. So if you just use 25 millimeter, that will be again increase your time. Uh, in some sir, time 20, 25 you... 25 mm mesh took me around uh, 9 to 12 hours, sir. 9 to 12 hours. Oh my God. For us, yes, for a one run, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> so th th this is the you know this is the experiences by experiences you, and also when you run 20 or 20 or 10 models, you will know okay. So if you are designing the beam. The viscosity will be point triple zero three or triple zero one. If you are designing the mod column, that will be point double zero one or point double zero five. If you are modeling the slab, that will be again point triple zero nine. If you are modeling the foundation, the raw footing, the punching phenomena, that will be point double zero one. So viscosity and dilation angle, the mesh size. So by it, you know, giving the time on the on the software, spending the good time, good quality of time on the software, uh, reading different blogs about the softwares. About the papers, you will have a good idea about the mesh size, about the viscosity, and also after today's lecture, uh, that's one thing for you if you wanted to do. Just 
we model your assignment which i just give you uh with the quarter modeling and just submit and just check it uh, just you have to just uh, one touch you don't need to run the whole case you have to just check it whether they, you have any problems or not so you have to just go there and check data check that's it if that if you don't have any model if you don't have any error in the modeling in the material property in the meshing in the assignment that's all that's that's all the purpose of of the first module so i'm i'm really happy uh, that the amount uh, that the qualities of the question which i'm receiving through the emails uh, your uh, your interest uh, your feedback on the team and on on our channel and our facebook i'm really happy that uh, you are giving good quality of time to this software because it's not a you know piece of cake it's a fem and right now if i say that uh, a backus has a 100 point so i don't think we are we cover more than one point so if we have still 99 more point for the structure points i'm not talking from the mechanical point of view or the fluid in, uh, analysis for the hydraulic uh, engineering point of view i'm just talking that around 100 maybe we just cover one or two points we have still 98 99 more points and you will inshallah cover it uh with the passage of time by working on the backus okay now if before taking your question uh we will have a, another we will have a small break for the prayer and you know small break and then we will discuss about your feedback about your question but before going to the breaks i just want to discuss that how people use a backus for you know for their uh, for their research work so in the start when when uh, in the start of the today's lecture i'm discussing that i i am reviewing this paper uh, let me show you the yes so this is my email uh, invitation for the review and the journal name is steel and composite structure the impact factor of this journal steel and composite structure is around 3.2 i think so the title will be increment tel plastic analysis of confined concrete by considering the variation of the elastic modulus so if the young minds like fundra bsc student or master student the co why so there may be some rocket science in this paper so they are using the incremental plastic analysis of confined concrete by considering the variation of the elastic modulus oh this is the you know something Uh, very interesting or very uh, complex is difficult to understand it but believe me it is nothing why i am saying they are using the concrete dimensionality model in a backus software you know it okay you don't know how to define the frp but inshallah uh, having the second module training uh, that will be again piece of cake for you people and what he did in in introduction he discuss about the young modulus of e so we provide e okay Uh, for the concrete but how to provide the e for the elastic model uh, for the frp we have this formula for the steel we have this formula and seriously what they did they proposed some models so i asked that thing to shweb and shweb calculated some e modulus stress and curves uh, from the three model which he he was just showing before uh, shweb can if if i give you shweb any problem can you find out the elastic modulus of uh, any confined concrete Uh, by uh, by the formula suggested by the previous researcher uh, yes sir it is nothing because we you we are yes, using sir, the same parameters are given the, yes because sir. for the for the concrete we have uh, formulas are given we have to just find out the parameters and give the material property and then this is the stress sigma c sigma cu these are the parameters which we are using in our poison ratio so this is the same diagram which we discussed about 0.45 so we are using 0.4 he suggested 0.45 so what's the difference nothing the difference so this is the stress and curve this is the uh, poison ratio effect and what he did he used the final response in the first thing he used the different curves of the poison ratio yes so that's the proposed method for each sample in addition to the two numerical curves corresponding of the poison ratio 0.2 and 0.459 uh, this is the paper which is under review this is not the published work so we are talking about and it will be published in 2021 so i am discussing you the concept how the researcher used the power of the backers to publish their work in 2021 
six months ahead from today's date. Okay, so don't forget about this thing. And they discuss about things. Okay, for your serious MATLAB, don't worry about the MATLAB. I already proposed a MATLAB software for the civil engineering in the uh, in the upcoming event. Inshallah, if I have good response, I will get that uh, for you. And then uh, then we compute the sum of the absolute value of the difference between the experimental curve and the numerical hybrid curve. And then uh, these are the numerical strain value. So normally the strain will be point triple zero three. So that's why he's using point triple zero one. Okay. So at the end, what he did, you know, what he did, he make a table. He he had some already conducted experiment. He used these formulas: lambda ten two thousand three, lambda ten two thousand three. I already I already discussed about this in my paper, which is available on the team for you people. And then he do some uh, he run some models. Uh, he runs twelve models. Right now, I think Shweb ran more than 20 models right now for his problem, and he used the KE factor, the uniaxial stress factor here. He discussed about these are the models, uh, the length, the width, the length, and the you know the sigma, the number of the layer of FP, and this basically this is his model, the steel cube, the hollow steel cube model confined with the FRP, and then he ran this is his. Uh, low deflection curve, and I did. Uh, I gave a very major comments that I cannot read this paper. I cannot read this graph at a scale of 150. So that should be, you know, improved. And how can we improve a better graph by using the MATLAB? The Excel is now a, a you know, the child's play. That's not the researcher's room. So the, for the researcher, you have to learn good plotting software like a, a MATLAB or uh, maybe Origin. So these are the curves. Uh, Shweb has similarly kind of load deflection curve for his problem. He compared with it, okay, and then uh, he he discussed about uh, uh, you know the about uh, the peak values and you know about the proposed method, the error function, the average, and then he discussed, okay, my this model is good, my this model is not good, and this is the purely numerical based paper, which. Is under review in 3.1 Impact Factor Journal in Q1 Journal without any epic, uh, APC article processing charges, and this is the topic. Okay, so if he can do it, why not you? If he can just read one paper from the literature, which is easily available on Science Direct, and he can play with the Poisson ratio, with the elastic elastic modulus, uh, with the dilation angle, with the mesh, then why not you people? So just start. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your energy. You, you are, you are, mashallah, brand. You have a good mind. You have a good supervisor uh, at your university. Please don't waste your time. Uh, try to do something. Try to do. Try to publish some good papers that will be help for you to securing a good uh, scholarship for your masters or for your PhD. Okay. So this is unfortunately due to the contents. I cannot share the whole paper with you. Uh, but when it will be available on net, I will share with you. Don't worry about it. Uh, but this is just a concept for you people. And uh, so now we will take a, you know a small break, and then inshallah after 10 to 15 minutes, please write down your questions about today's session, about previous session, about the last six sessions, about material. If you want to share your model, please prepare your backers. Please share it. Just raise your hand and I will allow you and you will share your model. Just discuss about it. Just share your experience. What are the different problem you associated while modeling, while submitting, while defining the material property, while defining the, you know, uh, the experimental scheme. So just, you know, if you want to share or if you have any feedback, uh, just let me know. Uh, from the feedback point of view, I just send you one email. I hope you received this email about the, the last session. So please, can you uh, just open this link? It's just a two minute job. Uh, uh, before ending today's lecture, I want uh, I want to have your feedback about the modeling one materials. You have to just tick it. So the one is disagree and the last one is uh, strongly agree. So whatever you want, I didn't uh, ask your uh, your information about your email, about your uh, role number. There's nothing about this. This just a nine simple question and one uh, tab for your feedback. Your feedback. Remember, always whenever you are a part of our course, 
a part of a training session, a part of a workshop. Just provide your feedback with your honesty, because that feedback will be very helpful for us, for for you know, the trainers, for the organizers, uh, that we can improve ourselves. And we will come in the next time. We will in the future. We will come with the better weapons, with the better tools that will be help you. Obviously, in this one, we have a online issue, technical issue. Uh, I can, uh, I hope you can understand this problem. So please, uh, during this 10 minutes or 15 minutes uh, time, uh, please spare some two minutes for me. It's a humble request for all of you who are present here. So right now I have 15, uh, you know, attendees here. Uh, so please, it's a humble request. Just complete the form, and we will join. Uh, we will again uh, meet in 15 minutes. Uh, Jiu Sama, बच्चे, आप क्वेश्चन पूछना चाह रहे थे? Uh, 